I'm nervous because you guys matter so much to me and what I'm talking about matters so much to me so that's like the double whammy I am shaking but and that's why I have cue cards because I don't want to forget anything and I'm gonna check my time so that that way I can not get the, the hat thing done to me okay so so now the official beginning this presentation could very well have been called the accidental activist because you know what I never intended to become an activist. I'm a pregnancy and parenting author, a mild-mannered mother of four, and so I was just going around, doing my own thing. This all happened by mistake. If you had told me five years ago that I would wake up and be standing in the shower in the morning and thinking about democracy in Canada and social justice, which I will forever think of as pillow equity, <laughs> I would have said, what are you talking about? That's not my life. But of course, in 2005, I didn't know I was about to go into a three-year devastating clinical depression. Sometimes we just don't know what little surprises are waiting for us around the corner. But now I'm going to bring social media into this or people are going to feel really ripped off. So, so let me get on to that part. Oh, I started in social media in 2004 because other people were doing it. So I did some parenting blogging and I did some political blogging because I wasn't too happy around 2006 about what was going on in my country. I'm not going to get all partisan here on people because I read the, the guidelines for speakers about what we should say and what we shouldn't say. And, but you know, stuff was happening. I wasn't happy. And then something amazing happened. I met this entity. Oh my God, I was just taken by surprise. He had so many friends and all the friends were just so interesting. They all wanted to talk about the same things as me. They'd talk 24 hours a day. He was a little geeky. He spoke in this language called hashtags. I didn't quite understand what that was all about, but then the clincher, he promised if I stuck, stuck with him, we could change the world together. <laughs> Whew. How could I not want to run off with Twitter? <sighs> he was definitely my man, so we started making trouble together. <laughs> Eventually, my husband noticed what was going on and asked me, <laughs> who was Twitter and why was I spending so much time with him? My husband joined Twitter <laughs> to keep an eye on us. My husband has tweeted, I think, five times now, <laughs> but uh, mainly it's just me and T. <laughs> so, meanwhile, back in the real world, things were starting to get interesting in my riding. I'm not going to tell you the name of my MP or the party. If you care, you can go research it. It doesn't really matter. A politician who was not acting particularly ethically was doing the spin thing, as often people do in politics. Too sadly, too often. And I decided I, I wanted to try to do my bit to hold him accountable. So spin, I would blog counter spin and say, wait, when I fact check, that doesn't seem quite to be true. Can you give me a, a minute check? I'm good? Of left? Okay, good, good. I just get nervous about these things. And so, Yes, okay. <laughs> so I would, I, I would obviously make him uncomfortable, right? So um, I Googled myself one day and I found out that I had made him so uncomfortable that I showed up on his news group, on, on a, an unofficial fan group on Facebook that had, somebody had established in his honor. There were libel statements, I have to, um, do the dry mouth thing. Um, there were libel statements about me on this Facebook group, and so I thought, what can I do about this? I thought, there are a couple of things I can do. I can send an email and ask that the comments be removed. I did that um, trying to contact the Facebook group owner. I can contact the constituency office and ask them to deal with it there. I can when I got no response, I can go to the office in person. 
What I experienced there was like something out of a bizarre Kafka or Orwell novel. Um, questions. Why would you make these bizarre statements about the NP? Why would you call him fatso and goof and all this stuff that I had never done? It was like being in a parallel universe. Now fast forward to 2011. Some of this sounds very bizarre, but if you go out there, it's out there. And I decided what could I do during the spring election that we've just been through to try and make a difference and hopefully champion democracy. Luckily, the mum of vote people were out there and I thought, this sounds like a great party. So I thought I can share good information. I can, I've lost my sound, no? Okay. Am I, is it? I think you may have, there. Trying good? Are you good? I don't know. No, you're not on. You're not on. Mm -hmm. There is a hand. There is a hand, Mike. I would say political conspiracy, but that would be paranoia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The whole, the whole system's, system's down. down. Okay, so you've got to yell, Anne. Okay. Just <laughs> I am going to use my outraged voice. Okay. So I decided that it would be my personal mission to keep tabs on things on the MP's official Facebook okay. Page and when there was spin, I would post counter spin. This did not make some of his supporters very happy. Other citizens decided simultaneously that they would do the same, and things got a little messy. <laughs> In a nutshell, what happened were two things the citizens were subject to libelous smears. Have you ever heard of a citizen smear campaign in the midst of a political campaign? No. Things got ugly offline as well. People received veiled, intimidating messages. For example, one mother received an email that had personal information about her daughter. Another person received an email saying that something might happen at her place of work. The workplace was concerned enough to hire a security guard. But Twitter to the rescue. My favorite superhero lover came to my rescue. In so many ways, tweets were sent out by a number of people who were really concerned and freaked out about what was happening in Peterborough. Um, okay, you know where I live, in Peterborough Riding. <laughs> it's out there. And PhD in parenting, one of our, twi our Twitter sisters, decided that she would blog about it on a very prominent blog. So what was happening went viral and went national. People were outraged. I wrote a letter to Elections Canada detailing some of my concerns. I said that if this is an online town hall where people are be being given the opportunity to discuss issues, then surely citizens should be treated with the same respect as what they should in a real live town hall. Elections Canada wrote back with a form letter and said, we're sorry, we're not equipped to be able to police politician attacks on citizens, we deal with politician to politician interactions. So I have some strategies which I'll be carrying forward, but I just need a little more time, literally. <laughs> quickly, okay, quickly I'm just going to wrap up by saying two things. First of all, you want to know what happened, right? It was an election. Was it a success? Politically, eh, the politician was returned with a higher than ever level of the popular vote, 49.7%. Personally, it was a resounding win for me. My kids were proud of me. My kids are now politically engaged. I found a cure for depression that isn't listed in any of the medical textbooks. <laughs> when you use your voice, you feel powerful and strong. And I found a community on Twitter who told me, the work you are doing matters. You are making a difference. The world's a better place because you're in it. You are a force for change, how tweet it is. Thank you very much.